Hello, I'm JW, and uh, today we're going to look at a pillar drill, or bench drill, that I recently obtained. Now, it is in working condition, although uh, it was sold as being in a grotty state, and it certainly is, but it was very cheap, so it doesn't uh, particularly matter. And we're going to take it apart and uh, clean it up and hopefully get it into a kind of semi-reasonable condition. So it's on the floor here because it's too heavy to put on the table at the moment, so uh, let's have a look. Now, this is not the drill, obviously. This is a vice that came with it. And as you can see, it's pretty much uh, surface rust over the entire thing, but uh, it's not completely destroyed because, I see, it does actually turn, I'll turn the uh, handle there. So uh, probably not beyond repair, despite its appearances. So we'll clean this up, obviously, later, and hopefully that can be used as well. And it's a reasonably uh, small one, I mean, it's only sort of two and a half inches or something, uh, dual width there. And you see the uh, underside is pretty much rust city as well. Now here's the drill uh, just standing on the floor here, just by the door, and it's a fairly heavy item because this is a pretty old machine. It doesn't have any date on it obviously, but uh, age-wise it's going to be probably 1940s or 1950s. And as you can see it's a uh, fairly substantial item made out of pretty much cast uh, iron or steel or whatever. And uh, most of the components are actually there. It doesn't have the guard on the top here. You could get a guard that goes on there, but uh, that was fairly common for things at the time. They generally didn't come with that as standard, although, of course, uh, you could get one uh, at the time. Not uh, really compliant these days, because uh, foolish people might uh, put their fingers in the moving belt and cause injury, but, uh, of course, at the time, people were more sensible. It didn't require that kind of thing. Now, on the side here, we can see the actual starter, but it's just on and off. It's an old uh, MEM or MEM start it. And again, that does actually work. Now the wiring to this is somewhat suspect. Uh, this is basically some uh, twin and earth, as in fixed wiring cable. Not really suitable for attaching to uh, items of equipment because it's not designed to be flexible. As you can see it uh, just bends and holds its shape. This is definitely not from the 1940s or 50s, but uh, nevertheless it's pretty old. We've got this rather nasty plug on here. This is a dual plug. Note the unsleeved pins, which means this plug is pre-1984, I believe it was. So. 30 plus years old at least, could easily be a lot longer, and there's no cord grip because the twin earth is too fat to fit in there. So of course we'll be replacing all of the wiring. Same wiring is also used from the starter to the motor around the back. Now the starter has some odd traces here of blue paint. Uh, most of this has no paint on it at all, so uh, not clear what colour it would have been once, but certainly the starter's got a bit of pale blue on there. The table, as is often the case with these, has been uh, drilled into this uh, arc here. This is because uh, fools, when they adjusted the table, put it out of position and then just mashed through with the uh, drill and put holes in all the way across. Now, uh, it's not gone all the way through apart from here, so again, it's not a total disaster. These can, of course, be uh, either filled with uh, epoxy or something, or if you wanted to theoretically weld and uh, grind it flat again, but uh, either way, not the end of the world, and say a very common issue with older drills and even new ones in some cases. Now this is the front here, there is a badge here which is a bit difficult to see, but uh, the brand here is Tauco or Torco as in T-A-U-C-O, and a bit difficult to see because it's also faded away, but uh, essentially this appears to be a rebadge of a Delta or a Milwaukee machine. Delta was uh, based in uh, Milwaukee in America. And it appears that these were brought over here and basically just uh, relabeled and had a different motor stuck on, obviously, for the UK power supply. So basically this is a uh, Delta drill. It's just got the different label on the front, though. Unfortunately, 99% of the paint has gone. Now here's a look at the uh, side here. And uh, you can see maybe in here, we can actually see the model here is DP220, which is basically the Delta model number there. So. That's uh, just sort of embossed into the, or debossed into the casting. Uh, motor on the back here, again, it's quite a large size motor, though, uh, again, the paint's come off. It was obviously black originally. No idea what colour this was. It may have been that pale blue, but as you can see, all the paint is long gone. And say so the belt on the top, it does have one, but uh, as you can see, it's in a pretty poor state. There's a bit of a cut there, and the whole thing is basically frayed and pretty much destroyed. But uh, again, not a problem, becoming belts are pretty cheap and readily available pretty much anywhere, so that can easily be replaced. Now on the side here, this is where the quill spring should be, and this is actually broken, and I'll say this should not uh, just rotate around, it should lock in place. And there should be a spring basically coming out of the slot here, and this is what uh, causes this to return when you release the handle. As you can see here, it doesn't return because 
something that is broken. And again, these are quite cheap to obtain, so not a problem. Look how short this bit of wire here is. It's just some basic twisted bit of wire, which presumably had something attached to it at one time, but of course that's uh, not there now. And you can see from the top here, the whole thing is absolutely filthy and covered in grot and grime, so we'll be cleaning that off shortly. Now this is the other side. We can see the remains of a label here. It's pretty much uh, destroyed and gone. And um, we've got a little thing here with the serial number on there, but pretty much that's it. Uh, that may have been some kind of manufacturer's label or contact details for whoever supplied it, but uh, nevertheless, that's uh, completely gone. Uh, we do have the handle. This appears to be the original one. And you can just lose it here and then adjust the position with the rod there. And uh, it does actually move. I mean, it does. Uh, raise and lower but as you see there's no spring action going on there it basically just will uh, sit there and then actually fall down it's reasonably uh, stiff there so it obviously needs uh, cleaning out and lubricating got the uh, depth stop here so that's still intact there and we do have the chuck on the bottom whether that's the original lot is not clear at this stage and so the wiring here this is the side of the starter now i had a quick look online and you can actually find quite a lot of instruction manuals and diagrams for these machines. They seem to be quite a common machine, or certainly they were common once. And the uh, instructions suggest that the starter should go on the left side of the machine and it's been put here on the right. Not ideal because if this rod is, say, uh, moved away from the mid position, so put it uh, like that, which is sort of more what you would want, it sort of bangs onto the starter. So this obviously hasn't just been put here, so it may well be better to put the starter on the other side, as it suggested in the instruction details. Uh, motor on the back here. There's no nameplate or data on it whatsoever. Obviously it may have had one once, but it's uh, long gone. It's just basically the rust and a bit of the black colouring left over there. This has also some black paint on the starter here. Let's say the front appears to be blue, so fairly unclear what the uh, original colour was. But again, it does work even though it's in this rather grotty condition. And the uh, base here, we've got the loosening piece here for the table. That is uh, pretty much stuck there at the moment. And of course the cast base with the mounting holes to go through. Here's a look at the front, and this is not actually too badly corroded. See, the chuck itself is reasonably clean. And we see the uh, actual scale inside here with the actual inches markings on that. Do have a little uh, pointer here as well, which would have gone in here just to mark a particular position, so that's still intact. Uh, it's got this piece of metal hanging here, which looks like some kind of tool, as the uh, as in removing the chuck, sort of a tapered thing to uh, wedge in there. But I'm sure this is not the original one, it looks rather crude and may well be handmade by somebody, but nevertheless, it's uh, just hanging on the side there. Chuck itself does open and close, so. At least it's not uh, totally seized together. And so we've got the uh, depth stops and things here. It does move, say, reasonably freely. So it's not uh, completely destroyed and reasonably uh, clean on the inside surfaces. Still no evidence of any colouring or paint or whatever here. So again, total mystery as to its original colour. Now, so we'll be taking this thing completely apart to uh, clean it up and obviously repaint certain parts of it and also uh, put some grease in the appropriate places so we'll just see if it does actually work first of all and as you can see there it does obviously run So as you see it does run, I mean it's not uh, terribly smooth because this belt is uh, basically totally wrecked, it's uh, falling apart in most areas, but uh, nevertheless it uh, turns around relatively smoothly, certainly nothing uh, seized or destroyed there. Now it's uh, a few hours later and I've just disconnected the motor here, so that's just one piece here, here's the manky old belt. Here's the starter, which we will not be reusing for reasons we'll cover at a later time, but basically it's no use. Whoever fitted the motor thought it was appropriate to use thousands of washers, so there's a massive stack here, and that's not even all of them because some of them fell down and got swept away into the bin, so uh, not very impressive there. So uh, those are the uh, components there, and 
here is the main column and the base. Uh, I haven't actually separated that yet, yeah, to just uh, put some oil in there to uh, soak in. And of course the uh, top piece, and we can see here the original colour, which was this sort of really dull grey type of thing. Some kind of war finish or something, which kind of supports the age the thing probably is. And then over here we've got the table, this is upside down obviously, and just some uh, disgusting rag. And the uh, actual main head casting here, and again we can see that grey paint here underneath where the actual uh, top guard fitted. So a rather dull and uninspiring grey colour. Middle's not too bad, it's not uh, corroded here at all. This is the chuck, it's actually a Jacob's chuck as it says on the side there. And if we uh, rotate around... And we can see there Hartford, Connecticut, uh, United States of America. So uh, certainly not a modern item. And uh, we can see in there 30, uh, 33, that's presumably the, uh, you know, the Jacob's taper. 6A and uh, capacity is half an inch, it looks like, which uh, looks about right, seems to make sense. The uh, truck does actually operate, so see it's reasonably smooth there, so we'll be uh, cleaning this up a bit better later on, but nevertheless, it's uh, fairly intact. Now, if you actually went and bought one of these chucks new, it would cost more than this entire machine did, uh, whilst I actually paid for it, in fact, a lot more, so it seems to be a decent deal. Here's that serial number on the side, so 19-1577, and the remains of say, whatever that label was, it's not uh, visible, or some kind of paint underneath there, again, that sort of weird grey colouring, but pretty much uh, gone, and uh, no way of finding out what that may have said. A bit of surface corrosion, but nothing terrible. Let's uh, all brush off, and then we'll repaint this in a more suitable colour. And just leave these in here for the or bolts on the motor attachment. Here's the motor mounting plate now that helicopter has gone past. And those uh, two rods there are just actually the uh, adjustment for the motor so you can adjust its position to tension the belt appropriately. And it appears that the uh, things haven't actually been moved for years because they are basically stuck in there. And they seem to have put the other motor on or adjusted it, thought that stacking up piles of washers would be an appropriate method, but clearly uh, not the case. You just use those slide things to adjust the spacing as required. So there's the base. It's uh, not too bad. There's a bit of paint and things on there. I think most of that is just spilled from other stuff as it's in all kinds of different colours. Certainly not something it was uh, provided with. And there was also various splashes on the column as well. Now again, it's a few hours later and I've cleaned up most of the components here. Obviously there's uh, still more cleaning to actually do, but uh, certainly on the vice here, at least we have now a flat surface, which isn't all powdery and disgusting with rust. This is the main column. Uh, not be able to get this out of here yet because it was probably rusted in at the bottom. Just having with these screws here and here, but even after moving those, it's still extremely tight in there. And I've cleaned up all the rest of the things here. We can actually see on this plate more of that sort of grey blue colour, which was obviously its original paint finish. And that's the motor mounting plate, so of course that would have got a great deal of surface wear there. And this actually has a tilting table. This is the uh, actual mechanism which goes on here. There's a, well, that thing there goes through the middle, and then the table can actually tilt, and there's a little pin which presses in here. It's actually that thing there to lock it in the horizontal position. So, a uh, tilting table was seized, but uh, that came undone reasonably easily. And this is the back of the table. You can see the hole there where the bolt obviously goes through. That's the uh, top there. The label is kind of readable, but it's uh, pretty worn out and knackered. And that's just some of the other components there. A bit of uh, more cleaning to do with some of those, although they've come up reasonably well. flash rust on those, but uh, that's to be expected. This is the main head of the machine. I haven't actually done a huge amount of cleaning on this one. I need to really dismantle it and take the quill out and the rest of it to see what's going on with those. That spring is definitely bust. I don't think the spring is even in there anymore. There's nothing obviously visible in the spring holder there, so I need to get a new one of them. 
and uh, the rest of it's reasonable there. So I haven't actually cleaned this, I just put a bit of uh, grease in there to loosen that, but it seems reasonably free moving. Belt here, you can see that's completely uh, shredded to ruination, so obviously we'll get another one of them. Starter, and of course the motor, just pretty much taken it off as was, so we'll look at those separately at a later time. So that's uh, pretty much it for this time. Uh, the intent with this machine is to actually uh, refurbish it completely and then actually use it as a uh, drilling machine, and uh, hopefully that will uh, go according to plan, although who knows, we'll just have to see where that goes. And this was a very cheap machine, it only cost £13.50, and it was picked up locally, so uh, no real cost involved, but given the state it was in, then it probably wasn't worth much more than that anyway. So uh, we'll be certainly seeing this in uh, future videos, but until then, thanks for watching.